Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and if you've seen any of our videos about this drone right here, the DJI Air 3S, you know it's pretty amazing. So we decided to put it to the test and see how smart it is with two different videos. In this video, we'll be covering return to home and obstacle avoidance. In our other video, which will be coming out in a couple of weeks, we'll be doing a lot of in-depth tracking with this and see how well it can track and follow certain objects under different circumstances and see if we can trick it. But for now, we're gonna see how it does with return to home and obstacle avoidance. So stay tuned and check it out. As a lot of you know, the Air 3S is equipped with LiDAR and vision sensors. These vision sensors can create a 3D map of where it's flying from so that when it has to return to home, it can come back and do it safely. We have done a test that a lot of people have actually done at this point where we took off under the roof of a gazebo with big openings on four sides and saw if it could actually come back through the opening without landing on the roof or without hitting any of the walls. And it did pretty well. You can see it created this kind of map of its path and it came right down and it flew right through the doorway and landed pretty much where it took off from even though it was under the roof of a gazebo. So Chris wanted to get really sneaky and take off from a exit that was the opposite direction he wanted to fly. Fly out, go up above the thing, and then fly back over it and see if it would come home by landing through the door that it took off from or if it would find a shorter path. Let's see what happened. All right, so now I'm gonna start a return to home. And it should try to enter back the way it came if it's gonna repeat what it did last time. So it looks like it's doing exactly the reverse of the takeoff path. Okay, hopefully it sees those trees. Yes, it does. All right. Well, it successfully made it back and it's rotating around. That's interesting info. It doesn't try to find the shortest path back to its home point. It just reverses its path from takeoff. In the next test, we had it take off from under a canopy, go through kind of a little archway on a playground, but on the return to home, Chris actually stood in its way to see how it would act. Would it hit him? Would it stop? Would it go around him? Let's find out. All right, returning to home now. I want to stand exactly in its path. You shall not pass. No. What are you gonna do? It's not doing anything. It's just stuck. It looks like I'm gonna have to move. I'll relent. Okay. You can go through. It seems to be very intent on taking the exact reverse path that it took when it took off. If something's in the way, it's just gonna be stuck and not find a better alternate pathway around. So for this next test, what we did was took off from an open area just out on the sidewalk, and then Chris updated the home point above a canopy. We wanted to see if it was smart enough to recognize that canopy and come down and fly under it and land under the canopy since that's where the new home point was, or if it would try to just land on top of the canopy. Let's see what happened. I will set the home point at this new location. So I'm going to go to safety and update home point to the aircraft and okay. All right, home point has been updated. Now I'm going to fly a distance away so that return to home is triggered. All right, so it's directly above the new home point. And it's coming down, it's coming down, it's coming down. And it sees it, it's trying to land. Yeah, I stopped it. I think it was gonna land. Maybe that was too tricky of a scenario. So for the next test, we tried taking off on a landing pad, locking the location, but then moving the landing pad to see if the vision sensors would try to find the landing pad and land on it, or just land at the original home point based on GPS. Yeah, it's got that, that home point locked in. It does not care where the landing pad is. Yeah, that's very accurate. I guess we did not trick it by moving the landing pad because it had a good GPS lock. 
So what I want to try this time is to turn the drone on indoors without letting it get any satellites, quickly bring it outside, put it on the landing pad, and then take off before it can set the home point with GPS. And then I'll move the landing pad and see where it lands. So it sees the landing pad as its home point, which makes sense, but I want to fool it. So while it's not looking, I'm going to move the landing pad over here. All right, coming in hot. Where is your preferred landing spot? Where are you going? Whoa, goodness, that's wild. It's flying really aggressively and it seems to be confused, but man, that's where it took off from. That is really impressive. For the final return to home test, when we move the landing pad, we are in a wide open field, hopefully with not too many landmarks for the drone to pick up on. We're gonna take off and see if it lands in the same spot after we move the landing pad. It's got zero satellites. Hopefully it kept track of where it was. Okay, it's got 23 satellites now. All right, so we've got four sticks here for us to keep track of the home point. We've moved the landing pad and our bags and I'm gonna hit return to home now. Here it comes. It looks as if it has the original home point. Like I can see, I can see it's locked in on that original home point. Oh my goodness. We can't trick it, Kelly. That's crazy. Look at that. That's dead center. There are the four sticks around it. Yeah, the four sticks are right here. We can't trick the Air 3S by moving the landing pad, I guess. Darn. Wasn't that actually a good thing? <laughs> well, I wanted to win. <laughs> and of course, you may all know that power lines and trees can be very deadly to drones because ghost branches and thin power lines seem to sneak out of nowhere and take down drones. But is the Air 3S smart enough to see a power line and avoid it if you try to fly towards it? Let's see what happened. All right, so I can clearly see the power lines in the camera's view. And I don't see any warnings yet. What's it gonna do? Oh, it saw the power line. I'm gently pushing it forward. It's just breaking. It doesn't wanna go any farther. Let me just check if it's set to, yeah, it's, it's set to bypass. Maybe it doesn't see a pathway around because the power line just goes left and right. Oh goodness. I think it was gonna try to go under the power lines, but it sees it right there. I don't feel comfortable continuing pushing it forward, but let's see if it can detect these guy wires. I see a warning that it detects an obstacle. Oh, it's trying to go through them. I think it will make it, but I don't want to test it. <laughs> For the next test, we came indoors, set up a black cloth and a white piece of paper and saw if it could avoid hitting those things as you flew towards them. So we wanted to see if it's LIDAR and vision system could tell that it's something that is gonna hit even though there's no detail on it, it's just plain white or plain black. I'm going forward and it just does not like it. What if I reverse? Will it detect that as an obstacle there? Oh, I think it was trying to go around it. I'm trying to go backwards right now and it's not letting me. How about this solid black surface? So let me fly directly towards it. Definitely sees it. How about with the vision system? Ooh, yep. So it's good to know that solid surfaces are detected by both the LiDAR and the vision system. So it seemed to do fine using its LiDAR and vision, but what if there's no lights and it doesn't have any vision? Can you fly towards a wall or an object and will it stop in the dark based on LiDAR alone? Let's see what happens. All right, so currently I'm going full throttle forward and it's not doing anything. Uh, let, me, let me try going backwards. Uh, full throttle backwards. It still sees the wall. 
Maybe it's because the light is on. Off. Oh, okay. Hold on, Kelly. Okay, hold on. That was a little scary. So going backwards with the light turned off, it would definitely drift into the wall. Okay, I want to turn around, turn the light off. All right. It does not see the wall. Hold on. That's scary. Let me try that one more time. Turn the light off and then go forward. It does not see the wall. Can you get a side view of it? Okay, so the lights are off. I'm gonna push the stick forward. I feel like it just did not see the wall at all. I wonder if the wall, because it has that acoustic paneling, was absorbing the LiDAR? Hmm, yeah. Maybe try this possibly. hard wall over here. Okay. This wooden wall is our next test. I'm gonna turn off the lights. I'm gonna to go towards the wall. Towards the wall. It's gonna crash. I don't think it was gonna see the wall. Let me turn the light off again. We go towards the wall. Yeah, yeah. I, it was gonna crash. So by default in the dark, the Air 3S turns on its aux light and it is able to see obstacles because of the light. As soon as we turned the light off, it started drifting and when I pushed it forward into an obstacle, it was not able to detect it and it would have hit the wall had I continued to throttle forward. So that leaves us with the question, can you really rely on the LiDAR at night? From these tests, I wouldn't. And then we had the opportunity to fly in downtown Austin with the Air 3S, had a good time doing that, but we wanted to see how it would do with return to home with very little light. It was about 11 o'clock at night. There was some city light off in the distance, but not a whole lot on the parking garage where we were standing. Let's see what happened with no light and the return to home. So Chris has been flying the Air 3S out over the city to get some uh, pretty night shots. And now he is going to hit return to home and we're gonna see how it does returning to home at night. Ooh, look at that. Ambient light too low, vision system and obstacle sensing unavailable, fly with caution, okay. There's what it's doing, kinda going very slow trying to figure out where to go. <laughs> Look at that flight path, it's, it's freaking out. Uh, it's coming towards us, slowly but surely. Yeah. It's right above us, or it seems like it. Whoa. It is looking like it's gonna be pretty close to where it took off from. Yeah. Wow. Way to go, Air 3S. Give it a little pet. Nice job. So we know that the drone can come back and land under an overhang or a canopy or whatever. As long as it has a clear path to get to the spot where it needs to go, it won't land on top of it. It'll come down under it. But could it do that at night? To test that, Chris took it out on the front porch, took off from the front porch, flew out from under the front porch, flew a ways away, and then hit return to home to see what would happen. Now I know that during the daytime, the Air 3S will create a 3D map of its surroundings when it takes off. But since it's very low light, what is the plan? It's going directly above the takeoff point, which means it's probably gonna land on the roof. Well, let's see about that. It's going down slowly. Okay, maybe it's not gonna land on the roof. Maybe it's actually gonna go back under the eave. All right, so far it's looking good. And what's it gonna do now? Is it just gonna land right there? It's just gonna land right there. That's nowhere near the takeoff point. Okay, well, that was kind of disappointing. It, it didn't even try. Let's try this again. You've got your new home point right now and just hover for a little bit. See if you can remember where you are. Okay, you've got 16 satellites. You can do this. Return to home. It looks like it's gonna land in the same exact spot. Why does it think the home point is way out here? Maybe it just finds a safe home point that's close enough to where it took off from when it's not comfortable with 
the takeoff point. Here's the home point, and it's landing over there. What are you thinking, Air 3S? For this last test, we're gonna try out the two return to home options in the menu. There is preset and optimal. Preset return to home will make the drone fly to a preset altitude before coming home. Optimal will find an optimal path to come back home. Let's see how different they will be when coming home if we take off from underneath a canopy of trees. So starting off with the optimal return to home. I'm gonna go a kind of a, a roundabout little path, see if it'll make its journey back to us following the same path. Now it's time to hit return to home. So I kind of want to watch it actually as it goes through the, the trees here. It's going really fast and it's kind of scary. It's going really fast, my goodness. It's following the exact path, which we already know, but it's just kind of funny wow. seeing it weave through the trees. Yeah, that's awesome. It was gonna miss by about four inches. Yeah. Now I'm going to hit preset return to home and I'll set the height to Let's do 98 feet. Now I'm going to take off and see how that return to home is different. And note, directly above us are tree branches and leaves. And I'm gonna fly the same path going away from us. And I'm curious if it will take the same route back or just try to fly directly above and return to home crashing into a tree. It seems very confident. Yeah. Like it was just like, showing off or something. What are you guys doing testing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm around the same distance away, around the same height. Now I'm going to hit return to home. Which mode are you in? We are in preset return to home. So it looks as if it's doing the same, same flight path, actually. I guess preset return to home just goes up to a preset altitude, and then it does its return to home path. So those two modes have no effect on its smart return to home. It's doing, yeah, it's doing the same exact thing as last time. Okay. That seemed exactly the same. Yeah, it is exactly the same. The only difference is that it flies up to a preset altitude versus just flying back at its current altitude. There we go. There's our final little test to try to see how smart the Air 3S is and kind of, freaking smart. yeah, it is pretty freaking smart. And to try to trick it, I wanted to win. <laughs> so after Chris did all those tests, we realized the Air 3S is pretty darn smart. It can map its way through a pretty complex a uh, set of trees, follow a path pretty confidently and actually pretty quickly too, but also smooth at the same time. It seems to be very confident. It's not foolproof, but it's pretty close. So if you're looking for a drone to track you or to uh, fly in spaces with a lot of trees around and a lot of obstacles, the Air 3S is a good one because it's unlikely to hit anything. It's not impossible, but it's unlikely. Let us know what you think about the Air 3S and its ability to return to home and its obstacle avoidance technology. We'd love to hear from you. We'll respond if you comment below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone. So to take it a step further, squeaky shoes. Sorry.